Welcome to the Do It All Dad Yard podcast, where Gen X parents understand dad-friendly entertainment for you and me. Controlling our kids with comedy can make our kids great again. And this is episode 87, Harvesting My Shadow Ban Part. My two books, Falling for Fatherhood and Stay-at-Home Comedian, will showcase my bountiful harvest of shadow ban parts flush with comedy gold nuggets and one of a kind heart. Can I get an amen? I said amen. Hear my rock ship coming. I hear my rocket ship of glory coming. My podcast, two books, and promotional reality TV show, Barnstorming Barbershop USA, will blow away America with infinite delight. Beams of laughter will light up the cosmos at night. Can I get a holla for some holla? Pregnant with possibility again. Have I been fired more than a Palestinian slingshot? Does the new Pope provide safe spaces for old guard pedophiles? But at least now I've got two bucks to put me in business as the voice for the do it all dead remote work revolution. Mang! Get rich or die a salary stiff. Wyatt Earp said it best. No man became rich being a salary man. Living paycheck to paycheck. Feeling your fortune is fixed to be another limitless, insufferable dead end. Hey, big bad Charles Bukowski, can I get a holla for some holla? I know you didn't like to give my people the Jews much props and you love your Gustav Mahler, but he's a member of the tribes. So let's give another holla for some holla. In the name of live aborted ones, I identify with aborted live ones, knowing my dad constantly questions how we're related in person with flipping let down disgust. Plus, he always tells me to calm down, insisting nobody cares about my political opinions anyway. <laughs> Can I get a holla for some holla? So on WordPress today, on occasion, someone will like an older post that I haven't thought about in a while. And there's a lot of posts that is some Excellent material that I've done on the podcast. And I thought this is very appropriate considering the opener. Knowing, you know, what's happening in the world these days. I, I'm still doing research myself about late-term abortions and the harvesting of baby organs and using uh, those uh, organs, you know, such as their, their heart and liver, basically using fully intact babies and using those babies for like organ replication for people that need missing organs and obviously I'm like sick to myself just even talking about it but this is the world we live in it's not something that we were taught about growing up in Gen X uh, we didn't even know like how you contracted HIV exactly all I know is that Sex was always a nerve-wracking experience. I feel like it's like coming with Richard Lewis. And it didn't really help matters, even if magic was able to make HIV disappear. But uh, in, not in honor, but uh, this is about LA. I lived there for six years. I definitely came face to face with plenty of evil. I've talked about this before in the podcast. But for those just listening now... Uh, who've heard because word of mouth. So one time I was hanging with this guy, Ming, on the wine shop in Hermosa Beach. 
And I thought we were doing exceptionally good cocaine because after only one line, I was up for a week <laughs> and I thought to myself, I acted like a coked out Tony the Tiger going, this shit is great. <laughs> and then a week later, I have a call from that guy, Ming. And that was a, a rough week before. I felt totally winded. My brain felt raped. And I said, dude, Ming, that was really strong cocaine. And he said, dude, we did crystal meth. I thought you knew the difference. And I said, what the fuck is this? The Pepsi challenge? <laughs> so, this is inspired by satanical scumbags like Ming Dynasty and for all of you rape enablers scumbags that exist in Hollywood that have had your perverse fun in the sun who for the longest time I wanted to impress in the worst way and that's no longer the case <laughs> especially when I found out we did the Corey Haim and Knowing that you tried to take out Corey Feldman recently when he said that he was going to release new names. I mean, the writing's on the wall. So I, I'm not going to get into the everything I know about Pedogate, Pizzagate, and all of the uh, Lolita Island. I'm not going to get into it. But I will touch on it in this piece, which is my FU referendum to Hollywood. Because... Like I said prior, these two books are coming out, Father's Day, 2019, Book of Humor, State on Comedian, all of my Harvest Shadaban parts, and then we've got Falling for Fatherhood. Our three kids got my act together, It'll be a collection of my beautiful, hilarious essays on Falling for Fatherhood. And I, of course, they're all love letters to my three perfect children. Drinking a Paps Blue Ribbon there. So, a Pilsner, by the way. The hipster beer of choice. <laughs> uh, they're not an advertiser because hipster is what I learned when working for the Village Voice and City Search, trying to sell digital ads to restaurants and bars. They don't believe in the effectiveness of advertising, man. <laughs> so, here we go. Enough preamble. What's my blog about Rapewood? <laughs> it's about an ex-pothead lost boy who found his mojo as a stay-at-home dad comedian. It's about falling for fatherhood hard and rising from slug to stud as a paid remote American writer on the rise. It's about proving I can deliver the funny and hard on both the universal and topical better than most. It's about showcasing my Neil Young productivity and Metallica brooding intensity. It's about not sounding too rehearsed or sounding too formulaic like every other jerk off on the Twitterverse. Can I get an amen? I say amen. It's about mining for comedy gold and exercising my freedom of speech so my wife no longer treats me like such a treacherous leech. It's about getting laughs from strangers, which is what comedians live to do. But I have three kids now, so chasing down open mics in the city aren't as easy to do. It's about promoting the benefits of attachment parenting, which is turning your bed into a 24-7 open milk bar. But my kids' complexions glow as opposed to other kids who look like they took a load to the face with an Elmer's glue gun so far. <laughs> it's about calling out fake news racist charges against President Trump. Unlike Obama, President Trump never drank, smoked, 
or dead bumps. <laughs> it's about becoming a voice for the remote work revolution and stay-at-home dads who get less respect than IT recruiters. It's about doing my own version of Charles Bukowski's zero bullshit poetic prose, Thomas Paine's freedom of speech loving verse, and Walt Whitman's making love to the world through words. <laughs> it's about becoming an unplanned parent of three and how it's the best thing that ever happened to me. It's about writing the funniest parenting book ever about working remote, falling for fatherhood, and controlling my kids through comedy. It's about recycling my jokes on Twitter, which shadow bans my material every time I get another hot streak, which has been for two years straight and counting. <laughs> it's more than just a creative outlet, babe. It's the greatest do-it-all dad show on earth. But I'm glad you're making tomato soup grilled cheese sandwiches with your boyfriend now to reduce your combined girth. It's not about bashing Whitey because that's more played than dedicating the song We Won't Fool We Won't Get Fooled Again to the Clinton Foundation at the only local karaoke bar in, in Haiti. <laughs> It's not about getting noticed by a creative director in Manhattan for a copywriter job anymore. It's not about just complaining about my parents abandoning me for Scottsdale, Arizona, 350 days a year with three grandchildren back east with me. Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> it's not about just entertaining myself or my own ego enlargement purposes. Although, more likes than usual on my WordPress blog helps. <laughs> it's about figuring out what writer I want to be. It's about writing my way into your heart, not whether I come across as a notch above learning disabled smart. It's about minimizing my intense, aggressive New York asshole aura by emoting about how wonderful my children are and how much they adore me instead. <laughs> it's about taking my writing career more seriously than ever and revealing more about myself than my predominant tendency to bludgeon your ears to death with clever. It's about becoming an important voice for Gen X dads who in the age of me too care more about preserving their nads. It's about how I have to become a parenting Arthur because Capturing voices is my forte, and getting inside my children's is the most fulfilling form of child's play. <laughs> and this is birth of a stay-at-home comedian slash father of three. But I need to take a breath after that, because that was a mouthful. <laughs> Kim Kardashian couldn't wrap her mouth around it. But... Kim Kardashian is now responsible for ushering in life-changing prison reform. So now, if I make that joke, I just come across as an ordinary, loudmouth, asshole comedian in comparison to Kim Kardashian minus rich friends. <laughs> Birth. Of a state owned comedian slash father of three. I was a major stoner throughout my 20s and 30s and forgot to ask my wife if she was still on the pill. I recall her saying it made her nauseous in between. <laughs> Birth of a state owned comedian slash father of three. Cuddle, I'm pregnant. I'm thinking, keep your mouth shut, tell Snuggle it's her decision, but then. Push for the abortion and don't be a pussy about it. It was a nice concept while it lasted. Three kids later, with weed out of my system, I feel my writing is more pregnant with possibility than ever before. Bang! Birth of a state-owned comedian slash father of three. My dad says, don't have another kid. I can't afford it. I get my wife pregnant with a second child. 
Arthur Morrison Cornbuth, born in the true spirit of FU parental rebellion. And every day, I sense his mojo rising. Birth of a state-owned comedian, such father of three. Growing up, for Thanksgiving one year, my father instructs, say something funny, moron. It's all good for. What's the general underlying implied message? That actually saying the moron part. Funny. I took his advice after all. Birth of a state-owned comedian, such father of three. God throws me a curveball for getting cocky after two kids, thinking, who needs Facebook grandparents from afar? When I've got Singing Rose, Big Beat Matilda to look after a younger brother, new baby, brother, Samuel, Gorilla Grape, Corn Blue, coming right up. Birth of a state-owned comedian, such father of three. My entire life feels like a cold call since graduating Ithaca, otherwise known as Cornell's retarded next-door neighbor, but I get more respect now than I did as an IT recruiter, so I can't complain. Birth. State-owned comedian slash father of three. After living in L.A. and Brooklyn, you realize your three kids are superior company than most. So you decide to start your own Do It All That Year podcast from home to go closer to the ones you love the most. And write your comedic book masterpiece, State-Owned Comedian. Because most stand-ups write shit prose and possess limited poetic powers of expression. Dice, Sandler, and Bill Hicks excluded, obviously. I'm in a generous mood, so I'll add Doug Stanhope to the mix. So you write a great book. And fuck you, no, for never getting back to you on all the good stuff I give to you. So I'm over you. <laughs> Third work was funny. And obviously, you're great in what you do. But for you claiming you're the best ever, calm down. <laughs> so birth of a state-owned comedian such father of three happens when you develop a love for the art of mere comedic creation in the form of spec scripts, TV pilots, blogs, short stories, videos, jokes, and poems, despite being called crazy for two decades straight Two decades straight and counting. But, as they say, you're only called crazy until you start able to profit and make loot sack and get paid off your creative genius already. <laughs> and that's right around the corner. So, keep on calling me crazy all you want, America. <laughs> I don't care. All right, so, birth of a state-owned comedian slash father of three. Growing, I have formed beer while working as a recruiter again for the Evil Empire at Robert Half and getting fired for developing a stubble right in my pilot for the great Nick DiPaolo on my lunch breaks and I'm staging my boss in karaoke to prove who is the real man in a half. <laughs> it's a other half that knocks women out. That's what makes me a man and a half. <laughs> so, birth. Of state owned comedian, such father of three. Being sent to a fancy sleepaway sports camp in Connecticut, only to be the second worst athlete there after the Sheik's son from Great Neck, <laughs> who chose to blow off canteen mixers with the sister camp to read cracked magazine comics in bed alone instead. <laughs> I really liked that alone time. <laughs> and my attitude was I mean, the one girl that I used to jerk off to, I think it was named Jamie, great tits. But then, like, she also has weight or had breast reduction surgery. And it looked like someone took a pin to her boobs and they went pop. And I feel like I had nothing to offer. I had nothing to say. I mean, what was I going to talk about? I had nothing unique to offer. I, I had no strength in my thoughts. I mean, I hadn't even reached puberty yet. I, I mean, you know, call me gay. I, I, I don't care. I love reading my cracks. And I don't eat the cracks. Later, I don't write a Louie, I don't like Nick DiPaolo to read it, compliment me, then I'm writing a pilot. I mean, that was an amazing heavy metal high, are you kidding me? I mean, Chris Jericho in person for America's Heart 100, we chest bump it out. I give this one line about Iron Maiden, about Bruce Dickinson's supernatural voice piercing through the clouds of heavy metal heaven. And then Chris Jericho goes wild, going, who wrote that line? Who wrote that line? That would be me, the big-headed and knock Jew over here, Chris, which you knew about. And I'm convinced he said that because he was making up for the fact that he totally ignored this Ozzy Osbourne joke because there was like a Sharon Osbourne uh, component to it. And he was totally scared, uh, shitless of pissing her off. So God knows what demons in the closet she knows about. Uh, and he also skipped a shrinkage, shared shrinkage joke at the very beginning. That VH1 approved, so he made up for me. But Chris Jericho's the man. He's an unbelievable. Birth, state-owned comedian slash father of three. 
So we wanted to get married on Mother's Beach in Australia. My wife comes from originally. My mother calls, son, Australia's a long flight from New York, and your father doesn't love you that much. Birth of a state owned comedian, slash father of three. My dad hasn't called me to wish me happy birthday for two years in a row, so you can't be too perplexed at my obsession with seeking love from strangers on Twitter and WordPress through poetic prose and endless laugh yankers galore. This is the Do It All Dad Year podcast. Dad friendly entertainment for you and me. Controlling our kids with comedy. Can make our kids great again. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll talk to you guys soon.